it's a real pleasure to have Peng Shan here from Tsinghua, I think. Is it correct? Yes, <laughs> yes from Tsinghua yes. in Beijing. Um, so uh, Peng will tell us about um, some coherent categorifications of quantum loop SL2. Um, thank you very much, Peng. Okay, thank you, Jody, and thanks everyone for being here. Um, it's a great pleasure to give a talk um, at this institute, which I would very much like to visit at some point, <laughs> but uh, we'll see uh, sometime in the future. Okay, so um, what I'd like to talk about today is a joint work with uh, Michaela Varnillo and Enrique Vesco, and so the paper is on the archive. Um, so um, in the first part of the talk, I would like to just give an introduction to this what uh, categorification of quantum group, and then um, say uh, what what I mean by quantum, like categorification of quantum group SO2, and then uh, I'll get to the main result in the second part. Um, yeah, so that's the, and, and give some applications to monoidal categorification of cluster algebras. So, so G will be a Katsumudi algebra associated to a quiver. Um, so let's say for in the case of a semi-simple Lie algebra, then it's just will be the thinking diagram of the Lie algebra. Um, and then as we know, there is a, you can fix a triangulate, a triangular decomposition of G. And so you have a carton and a, and a positive part and negative part. Um, where n here is the sum of uh, the root spaces for all the positive roots. Okay. And then, so we have this quantum group for the positive part of G. So I put the prime here to um, denote this algebra over the fraction field of uh, polynomial in one variables, uh, as well. So I would save the notation without prime for the integral forms. And so this is the algebra generated by uh, Chevalier generator EI for each I vertex in the quiver and subject to the so-called serial relations. Okay. And so it is graded by the weight for the carton. So, uh, so I would just identify this, um, this um, all the positive combination of elements in I as the as a positive part in the in the root lattice. Okay. So this is this is an I graded and it's, it has a structure of twisted bi-algebra. Okay. So it has product, co-product, and then their commutation relation. Uh, said there's some twist and it's according to degree. So uh, detail that I want to I don't want to go into. Okay. So the point is that um, we consider two integral forms inside this EQM prime. Um, the first one is just, so both of them are, are defined over this ring um, of integers joined with Q plus minus one. Okay. And then uh, what I note by UQN is um, so-called Lustig integral form for the quantum unlocking algebra of N. So this is the uh, ZQ plus minus one subalgebra of, of UQN prime, um, which is generated by the divided powers of EIs. Okay. So, uh, so the, this is the definition of the divided power here. Um, this is R is the quantum number. <coughs> Q or Q minus Q inverse, and then this is um, like uh, factorial R minus one zero. Okay. And so, as I said, uh, this algebra is is an I graded, and so is so is this integral form. So we get this is a direct sum of um, of weight spaces U Q and beta. And then um, there is another integral form inside UQN prime, which is kind of due to UQN with respect to some given uh, bilinear form. 
And so this is, uh, what we denote this as AQN, this is a quantum coordinate ring of the unipotent group of N. Okay. So it's just, uh, this name comes from the fact if you specialize Q to one, then this algebra is uh, U of N, and this is the function ring on, on the unipotent group. And so, uh, so as I said, this you can define it as um, the elements in e, UQ and prime, which are uh, which are uh, when you pair it with an element in the previous form, it belongs to this this integer ring. Okay, and, and again, this is also uh, graded by an I. Okay, so we um, like people have been interested in categorifications of these structures since maybe like 30 years ago, I would say. So the first, uh, like, uh, the first categorification was given by Lustig, and this is really the fundamental work in uh, categorifications of quantum groups. So if we started from our initial quiver Q, which is the set of vertices i and, and, and arrow set h. And then, um, so we denote by x beta the, um, the space of representations of this quiver q of dimension vector beta. Okay. So I consider it, uh, I consider the representations with coefficient in c. And now on this space, there's an action um, of the group G beta, um, which are like uh, automorphisms of representation, like iso isomorphism of uh, representations. Um, so it's, uh, it's a product of GL beta i. Here, uh, the notation is that beta is the sum of beta i times i. So I or beta are I are some positive integers. And then uh, and then this curly x beta is the quotient stack of this x beta by by this g beta. Um, right. And then there is a convolution product on the category of uh, bounded derived category of constructible sheaves on, on this curly x beta, or you may view this as this is the same as uh, the uh, equivalent derived categories on x beta with respect to, equivalent with respect to g beta. Okay. All right. And th this convolution product is defined in the following way. So you have, we have the following diagram where uh, on the left side, I have x beta cross x gamma, and on the right hand side, I have x for the dimension vector at beta plus gamma. And then in the middle, I have an intermediate variety which are formed by uh, pairs of representation, by a, a flag of representation of this quiver, where v is a sub representation of v prime. And V has dimension beta and V prime has dimension beta plus gamma. So the map P is just projecting to V prime and the map Q is sending this pair to V and, and uh, V prime quotient by V. And uh, so this is a smooth map, this is proper and you, you have a uh, well-defined functor from this category to, to this one, which just given by pullback uh, by Q and then proper push forward by P. So this is called the induction functor. And then, um, so what we're interested in is actually not the category, the whole category, the whole derived category of contractual schemes, but only uh, an additive subcategory inside it, which are formed by some semi-simple complexes. And so they're defined as follows. So um, let's consider the set, which I denote I beta. So these are the set of elements 
the, the sequence uh, u1, un in i to the power of n such that uh, the sum of new i is equal to theta. Okay. Um, right, because theta is a, is a, is a com linear combination of elements in i, and so this equation makes sense. So, and then we just consider uh, the complex, which is induced by uh, what, by the previous diagram. So, like, yeah, maybe I should say this product is associative, and so, uh, yeah, you can, you can continue. And, and this, and then you take, uh, you start from where um, all the dimension vectors are just supported at one point. And so these are the new one, new two, uh, new n, you take the constant shift on them, and then you just induce, um, induce them and so you get you get an element in uh in so this is in dbc of x theta and uh and 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 it depend on it depend so this yeah this product it's of course not commutative depend on on the sequence u and so this this complex is uh l nu And so by decomposition theorem, um, like all the, so this one, you can see that it's basically um, pull back of a constant sheaf and then push forward by a proper map. And so it's a, it's a semi-simple complex. Um, and, and then we take, so Cx beta is the additive subcategory inside the category of constructible sheaves on X beta which is generated by uh, the direct sums of, of L nu for all the nu in I beta and their direct summons and all the shifts. Um, right, so there's an important fact is that this, this category is, is monoidal, that means it's uh, preserved under this product by induction. Okay, and then, so this is uh, the fundamental work of Blue Stick in 1991, is that this, the, if you take the split prodendic group of this additive category, um, equipped with product given by this uh, induction, and this is isomorphism, uh, isomorphic to uh, the, the integral form UQN we introduced above. And here, uh, Q, the pair multiplication by Q corresponds to the, the cohomological shift in the, in the category. And then uh, induction corresponds to multiplication. And what is important, as we said, is that this is a semi-simple complex. So it's a direct sum of IC sheaves um, with some shifts. And then uh, Lustig just defined this the image of these IC sheaves as canonical basis of UQ of n. Okay. So this was the like the original definition of canonical basis, and of course there are other uh, other description of it later on. Okay. So um, this is like the first episode of of categorification of quantum group. Let me continue. The, the second episode, I would say it's the, the discovery of quiver Hecker algebras by Kornov Lauda and, and Rukier in 2008. So they defined the family of Z graded algebras, which are called quiver Hecker algebras or, or KLR algebras. So, um, the definition of these algebras are quite explicit. So for each beta in an i, such that the sum of beta i is equal to m. So these are some algebra given in terms of generators and relations. So you have generators of uh, idempotent for each new in i beta and x1 
some polynomial generators x1, xn, and some kinds of great generators tau1, tau n minus 1, modulo some explicit defined relations. So I'm not going to write down the relations as uh, I, I won't need it, but I just want to make the point that this is a very explicit algebra, which you can have your hand on and, and compute it. And, uh, and then the relation with Lucic's categorification was pr provided by the following theorem by Varignolo Vesero and Gukie, which says that um, this graded algebra R theta is isomorphic to the extension algebra um, of this direct sum of Lucic's sheaves defined above. So in other words, uh, as the category Cx beta was defined, so the direct sum of this L nu is just a generator for this, this category. And then, um, and then our beta precisely describe all the maps between, between these generators. Okay. And so via this, this equivalence, um, you can see that there's an equivalence of additive categories from C, uh, Cx beta to uh, the graded modules over the graded projective modules over this quiver hack algebra R beta. Okay. So the map is just you can take the extension algebra from this sheath and then uh, you have a natural action of R beta and you get the functor. And it's quite, it's not hard to see that there's an equivalence of additive categories. Okay. And this, um, this equivalence sends the IC shifts to indecomposable self-dual projective modules. Okay. So in other words, um, this quiver high algebra provides an, an algebraic description of this category uh, Cx beta, which was defined uh, geometrically before. So I find this is, this is really remarkable because uh, in general, if you have a geometrically defined category and, and then it's not obvious at all that you can compute all the homes inside that, that category. And then, um, so the theorem of Kronoflada and Rukier, um, together with uh, this theorem of Ranulo Vesper Rukier, provides uh, as a categorification of the quantum group in algebraic terms. So, uh, in other words, we have a we have an isomorphism between the split Grodeni group of R beta graded projective modules with UQN. Um, and then which sends indecomposable self-dual by previous theorem sends uh, indecomposable self-dual projective to canonical basis. And moreover, uh, dually you have uh, the, the integral from AQN is categorified by um, direct sums of, of Grodeni group for the abelian category of graded modules over uh, graded finite generated modules over R beta, finite dimensional modules over, over R beta actually. Okay. And so on the left hand side, uh, we have the monoidal structures for, for both these two cases are given by induction. Okay, so um, in fact, in by the definition of these algebras by generative relations, is there's the natural embedding from the product R beta cross R gamma inside R beta plus gamma. So whenever uh, you have modules M over R beta and N over R gamma, you can just use this embedding to induce them to R beta plus gamma. And then, and then you get, uh, you get a module here, and this defines a product on the direct sum of all this uh, all these golden groups. Okay. And similarly, uh, 
the co-multiplication is given by the restriction functor uh, multiplied by some idempotent. So uh, I mentioned that these two are due to um, construction are due to each other, uh, in, but I need to say in what, in what sense, and actually this is in the sense that you consider, uh, so I, as I said, these two are dual with respect, respect to some given bilinear form, and actually this bilinear form can be categorified, and, and, and it is um, given by the home pairing between uh, projective modules and uh, and uh, finite dimensional modules. Maybe I should put a put a twist, like a duality somewhere uh, in this formula, but let me just ignore this detail. Okay, so this is um, so this is what I wanted to say about the like non categorifications for quantum groups. Are there any questions? Or maybe the questions are saved for the discussion session. Okay, so now um, there's a, in the title, there's the word coherent, and then I want to say what I mean by coherent categorification. Um, so the previous categorification I discussed was for Katz Moody algebras. Um, but in the in, in Lie theory, there's also an important family of algebras, which are loop algebras of some Lie algebras. And then um, it turns out that their categorification should be related to, to some kinds of coherent sheaves. Okay. Remember, we were working on for on constructible sheaves before, but now uh, we're switching to the world of coherent sheaves. So recall we had this representation uh, space for, for the quiver Q x beta and has the action of the group G beta on it. And we have discussed constructible sheaves on this, this stack um, curly x beta. So now we're going to consider uh, some sort of um, cotangent of this, of this stack. And this is uh, defined in the following way. So you consider the induced action of G beta on T star of X beta. So this is a, this is a Hamiltonian action and you get a moment map from, from it, which um, sends the cotangent of X beta to um, the dual of the Lie algebra of G beta. Okay. This is a moment map. And then uh, this map is equivalent with respect to the action of G beta. So where it acts here as in this way and, and it acts by on G beta by the adjoint action. And in addition, we can put in a C star action, which acts on, so the left hand side is just a, ve a vector space. So it acts on this by uh, dilation of weight one. And therefore, and so this map is actually quadratic, so it acts on, on G beta uh, by dilation of weight two. Um, and then the, the, the cotangents of this uh, stack X beta is defined as the, um, the derived uh, fiber of mu, mu beta at zero. Um, quotient by G beta. So in other words, you do the fiber product of T star X beta with zero over G beta, um, the derived fiber product quotient by G beta. And then, and you can consider uh, analog, uh, an analog um, quotient. Well, it's not it, just like you can also quotient by this, this uh, extended group G beta C. So these two are some DG stacks, and will be considered um, will be considered the derived uh, 
categories of shapes of DG modules um, over these, these uh, DG stacks. So, um, right, so all these is kind of like, don't be scared of that is DG stuff. All, all this is kind of a background uh, motivation that like you need to put into the DG to make things uh, work well. But um, yeah, some kinds of coherent shapes on this, on this, on these tags. Okay, and so again, as before, you can use the same kind of uh, convolution diagrams to define uh, monoidal stru structures on this. If you put all this data uh, together, and then it, it is graded, the, where the grading is given by uh, here, I think the grading is actually given by the C star action. Okay. And so uh, there's a a theorem of Vernula Vestro, which is being right down, is that if Q is a Q is a quiver of finite type, which means uh, just a D type quiver. And then uh, the Grodeny group of this this uh, derived categories of DG modules, when you put all the beta together, uh, equipped with this, this monoidal structure is isomorphic to the quantum group of the loop algebra of uh, this positive part of the D algebra. Okay. In other words, so here, if Q is a finite type, and then uh, you consider GQ, so GQ will be type ADE, and you put in the, as before, so N is the, the positive part of this, this GQ. But you consider the D algebra, which is the loop extension of this of this um, this algebra. Okay, and then you have a quantum group associated to it, which um, I suppose it's defined by Dreamfeld. Well, it has a has a presentation by Dreamfeld generators and relation. And then the theorem is uh, that you have, uh, there's, a, there's an isomorphism of algebra like this. Okay. What happens if you drop C on the left-hand side? What happens if I drop C? Like if you just quotient by G rather than G times C star? Uh, but I think the Q is related to the C. Um, I don't know. Maybe you just get you the enveloping algebra of, of this. So w when you said it was a graded monoidal structure yes. on those on those categories, what was the grading? The grading was coming from the action of the C star, was it? I think so, yes. Okay. Mm. okay. So, um, so this raises a natural question, which is like, can we define, like previously we had this uh, category of uh, additive category defined by Lustig inside constructible sheaves on X beta. And then uh, the quiver Heikel algebra provides an algebra description of that category. And you can ask a similar question. It, it, can, you, can, can we uh, find an algebraic model for this category. So um, this question raises, this is, is of course too general and too hard because um, th this category is, is, is very complicated and you, you at least need to take some good active categories probably and you expect um, to describe that. But uh, even that is kind of difficult and, and I think for the moment, there is not like, at least we don't have a, any idea about how to do that. But uh, so uh, we can ask a further question, which is the following. So if we consider, um, so we have this Q, which is a finite type. So GQ is a finite dimensional algebra, and you can consider it's affine algebra. 
Okay. So this is the central extension of the loop algebra of GQ t uh, t minus one, and 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 we know that this is a Kasmudi algebra, right? So at least uh, from the first part, the first part can be applied to this Kasmudi algebra, and you get a categorification of the Kasmudi positive half. And then uh, by this theorem here, you get a categorification of another positive half. But there, but you can ask. So there, and these positive halves inter, inter like uh, uh, intersect over some part. And you can you can ask whether there's relationship between categorification of this part. So uh, so in other words, you can ask uh, like you can you can. As I will explain an example later, you can get some some subcategories in both sides. So one on one hand from clever Heckel algebras, on the other hand side from this coherent sheaf setting, and then you can try to compare them to to see if they are the same categorification. Okay. So um, let me illustrate this in the example of SL two, and so this is also. Um, where we can do some, we, we do have some results. Um, so this, in the situation of SL2, we just take, so, so the co corresponding quiver is just a point. Um, and then in this case, beta, well, as there's only one vertices, um, beta is just recording the dimensions on these vertices. So beta is just an integer r. And then, uh, so there's no arrow in this quiver. So the, the only representation is just zero. So this, this space x r is equal to zero. And then as uh, we said, I think, so, so, so in this situation, loop sticks, yeah, maybe I should say, but you consider an action of GLR on it, okay. So in this situation, the Lucic stack uh, curly XR will just be will just be um, zero quotient by GLR, and then so here it should be a curly XR, and then this cotangent stack will just be uh, if you, we review the definition. So the T star of zero is zero. So in this this case, it will just be the um, fiber product of zero with itself uh, inside the D algebra GLR. Okay. And then, yeah, I should put the C here. And then you quotient out by the group uh, GLR across C star. Okay. Um, and so in this situation, this category we, we used up above is just uh, the derived category of uh, DG modules over DG algebra, which is just the exterior algebra of GLR star. Because you use the causal uh, complex to resolve this, this uh, the structure sheet at zero, and you get this. Okay. And then you can apply causal duality to this, and you know this is the same as derived category of coherent sheets on the D algebra GLR star, which are equivalent with respect to this group action. Okay. So in the case of SL2, this is this category over here is really um, something like uh, nice and, and, and we have, we have, we're familiar with. So then let me say what we want to compare it to. So the, uh, let's look at the, the root system for SL2 affine. Okay. So we have, um, I actually denote uh, the, the, the only positive root in the original SL2 by alpha zero, okay? And then you have alpha zero and minus alpha zero in SL2, and then you have the imaginary roots, which I denote by delta. And, and so the positive roots for the Kasmudi, like in a, in a sense of Kasmudi algebra, 
would be this alpha zero plus n delta for uh, n bigger or equal to zero and minus alpha zero plus n delta for n strictly positive. So this is, this blue part will be the positive root in the Katz Moody half. And then uh, the positive root in the so called Dreamfeld half, that is what is related to this n SO2 tensor C of t plus minus one, will just be uh, alpha zero plus n delta for n in integers. So this is the, the, the Dreamfeld positive part. And, and as we said, so the Kazmudi positive half is categorified by a quiver hyperalgebra. But now you need to pay attention that you need to take the quiver hyperalgebra associated to the quiver of SL2 affine. So the quiver looks like this in this situation. So chronicle quiver. And, uh, and then According to um, what we said above about the coherent picture, the Dreamfeld positive half is categorified by this. So for the Dreamfeld positive, you just take the quiver for SL2. And then as explained in the example above, this is categorified by derived category of coherent sheets on GLR, uh, on the B algebra of GLR, still an, an equivalent with respect to this group. And so, uh, and so now you can consider the intersection of these two parts. So in the, in the intersection, the roots are just are like uh, alpha zero plus n delta for positive n. Okay, so we'll use it very often later. And so this is, this I'll call it beta n. And then you can see that uh, like the intersection of these two uh, enveloping, like like the the envelope, or I should rather maybe I shouldn't write this, but I should rather say that the enveloping algebra corresponds to this intersection part is just the enveloping algebra of n of bracket t without t minus one. Okay. All right. Um, Right, and so our our main result is just uh, it's a it's a equivalence of categories. So so as you can imagine, um, on the Kasmudi side, you can take a subcategory inside modules over quiver Heiker algebras, which corresponds to the categorification of this subalgebra. Uh, and on the coherent side, you can yeah you can also produce some some subcategories. Uh, correspond to this part and we, what our main result is the equivalence between these two categorifications. The theorem of Aranyola Vassaro that is on the screen at the moment, um, yes. how is that meant to relate to um, say um, Nakajima's construction of, um, of UQ of the loop group um, in terms of K theory of um, quiver varieties? Yeah, this is different. So this is really the, you know, the, um, the stack of mu minus one for zero. Well, Nakajima's quiver variety, you take the stable point and then quotient by the group. And so it is a module over, over this algebra. Right. So Nakajima, yeah, con yeah constructed action. It, it's, it's compatible uh, with Nakajima's construction. So Nakajima's constructed action of the of the loop group on the K theory of quiver varieties, but um, but it's not like it's not the it's a module, it's not the algebra itself. It turns out if you want to get the the algebra, um, you need to take this this this, uh, this stack of um, like pre-projective algebras. Okay. Yeah. So this was actually um, the first, the, the cohomology version was this cohomology cohol algebra construction. And, and this is the K theory version of, let's say, uh, Hall algebra. Another question would is, how is this related to, so, 
I can also imagine an arrow from um, kind of Lustig's picture to this picture, which is um, like taking Hodge modules and taking um, associated gradient of the Hodge filtration. Yes. I um, see, yeah. Um. I guess it's compatible. You see, you see part of it because, um, yes, yeah, because Lucic's power course, I think it's com compatible with that functor. That functor would corresponds to the embedding of u q n inside u q of n uh, t t mirrors. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you do that, you only see like a small part of uh, this category. And, and here the comparison is really like, if you want to get this part bigger, you need to take a different quiver. Say again at the end, I didn't understand what you said at the end. Oh, it's just, uh, I'm trying to say that uh, if you take Lucic's category and take the characteristic cycle functor, you get UQN uh, to here. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, what we want to do is to get more than that. And so you need, but, but then on the Lucic side, we use a different quiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I can just explain the main result. So, um, so our main result only works like in this SL2 setting. Um, what we do, so I need to first tell you how we define this subcategory corresponds to this, this intersection of Kazmudi positive part and, and Dreamfeld positive part. And so um, uh, this is done in the following way. So we have a have a so we consider a quiver high algebra associated with this Kronecker quiver, and then uh, we fix a convex order on set of positive roots, and so this order is chosen in the following way. So it's like alpha zero is smaller than alpha zero plus delta and etc. Mm. And so, and it's smaller than the imaginary root part. Um, and then, so when you fix this convex order, uh, there's this notion of uh, root vectors and dual root vectors in the quantum group for all the for all the positive roots. And so in this case, um, it follows actually from work of Peter uh, McNamara, and that there's a well. In this case, it's actually. Uh, maybe not yet, Peter. But <laughs> in this case, uh, we know that actually uh, the root the root vector e beta du are part of the canonical basis. So there's uh, there's a unique simple modules corresponding to it, and so this simple graded r beta n module uh, I would just denote it by l beta n. Okay. And so we want to consider. Uh, the subalgebra, which is quantizing uh, this UQ of n bracket T, where the roots, so this is, this is the direct sum of root spaces for all of these beta n's. So, um, so categorically, then what we do is that we take the full uh, monoidal sub series subcategory of this, all the uh, graded modules over R beta generated by these L beta n and all its graded shifts. So, uh, so this k are the are the graded shifts, and then uh, follow from def this definition the Grodin group of this thing. So, so remember this one categorifies the aq uh, the quantum coordinate ring of the positive part for SL2 affine. And then inside I have this uh, positive part, the loop, positive loops for the positive part of SL2. And so 
this is the growth in the, under this definition, this is called any group for, for this part. And then, so uh, yeah, so first of all, here's something we, we couldn't, so you would naturally, what you would naturally expect is that there is a graded monoidal uh, triangulated equivalence between the derived category of this category C here and uh, the category of coherent shapes appearing in this part, in this, in this setting. Okay. So as I explained above, for SL2 example, so here, what on the coherent side, what appears derived category coherent shapes on GLR view. And then inside it, this, this category by the whole NTT inverse, so inside it, uh, you need to take those corresponds to the, to the positive loop part. This corresponds to taking uh, the subcategory with shapes only uh, in positive degrees. So for the moment, uh, we can't quite prove this equivalence, but what we can prove is uh, it's sort of a central reduction of this, of this equivalence. So this is our main theorem, is that um, there is a graded equivalence of the abelian categories from, uh, so C sharp is a, it's a subcategory of C with the same set of simples. And I would, when I explain the proof of this theorem, I will, I will tell you what C, well, I will give you an idea about what C sharp looks like. And actually, um, on the right hand side, we consider um, the category of perverse coherent sheaves on the neopotent cone inside GLR dual. So the, per, the, the picture should go, um, yes, so I'll explain later. It's like, for, first goes from homotopy category of this to um, perfect complexes on, on the neopotent cone and then restrict to a billion equivalence of billion categories. So this, ca this, uh, this, this category of perverse shapes is uh, defined by Dijkavnikov, I think. On the on your potent cone, and uh, so this equivalence satisfy the following properties. So first, uh, on the Grodeni group, it's a it's an identity it's an identity map on the quantum coordinate ring of n bracket t. So and then. Um, and then on both sides, there are some properly stratified structure. So on the left hand side, this is uh, what uh, defined by what well, follows from work by Peter and, and, uh, and also uh, Kleshev. Um, and on the right hand side has been studied by many people. Uh, you can define a uh, proper standard modules, proper co-standard modules, and then uh, and they satisfy some, some axioms uh, related to the stratified structure. And actually uh, we can identify like we, the, the proper standard and co-standard modules uh, match each other uh, under this equivalence. And finally, um, this equivalence should be monoidal. So this is something in progress. I think we can prove it because some weak I think we can prove it, just not right, have, haven't been right down yet. Okay, so this is the, this is the statement of the theorem. Are there questions? Um, sorry, can I just ask a question to check that I understand what IQ uh, is? If um, if you set Q equals one in this um, quantum coordinate algebra, you get a commutative algebra, correct? Yes. So um, what is that saying about the monoidal structures on these, um, on these categories in your theorem? Well, I, I don't think it say anything very, it's, um, 
it's not it's not like like a symmetric monoidal. It's far from that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know what to say really. But I will maybe maybe um, yeah, I'll mention the relationship with cluster algebras later on. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But in the in like the KLR setting, the commutativity of Q equals one is something about x tensor y and y tensor x having the same simple sub quotients, but with different creating shifts. Yes. But um. Oh, the simple sub quotients. Right. Yeah, but the gradient is quite important here. <laughs> you mean you mean they're isomorphic as, as non graded modules? No, yeah, I don't yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe uh, I'll just continue with the proof. Okay, but anyway, maybe let me let me just go through uh, the 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 main idea of the proofs. So um, so actually, uh, the proof goes as follows: we it, it, we first construct an equivalence of triangulated categories, um, where on the left hand side we start with the homotopy category of of projective modules in this uh, quiver Heiko algebras. And then uh, you pass to some homotopy category of semi-simple sheaves on a, a thick of a Grassmannian. And then, um, and then we use some Ringel duality to go to, uh, or rather random transform to go to uh, the usual of a Grassmannian. And then the last step is um, accomplished by using the derived Sadaka equivalence to go to coherent sheaves on the neopotent cone. Okay, let me say a few step, a few details about each of the steps. So uh, if we fix beta, so beta will be of the form r alpha zero plus n delta, and then uh, the first equivalence is given as follows. So we know that if you take uh, if you take on coherent sheaf of P one. If you take the direct sum of OP1 and, and OP1 twisted by one, this is a, this is a generate this is a tilting generator for this category. And then uh, the endomorphism of T is actually the path algebra of this chronic quiver. And so you get a derived equivalence between uh, coherent sheaves on P1 and a representation of this chronic quiver and and under this equivalence you can um, the vector bundles on p1 uh, corresponds to pre-projective representations of this of this quiver so uh, from here we we actually get a, a isomorphism of stack between uh, bundles on P1 of positive degree and pre-projective representations of this chronic quiver. And so it is known that this, um, this Y is, uh, you, you can see that this Y is an open part in this, uh, in this X. Okay. And then, um, So, uh, and then by, um, I forget what, what's the name, I forget, the, is it called they, they, uh, renormalized, like, they parameterization, oh no, they, uh, uniformization theorem, that, uh, this bundles on P1 is isomorphic to, uh, the quotient stack of GLR of with a coefficient in Laurent, uh, in, uh, I forget the name, like uh, Laurent power series, and then quotient by GLR formal power series on one side and quotient by GLR T inverse on the other, on the other hand side. 
And so uh, under this equivalence, if you match the degree of the bundles, then uh, what you get is that uh, this y beta uh, will correspond to uh, a quotient. So you can view this as a quotient of the thick of Grassmannian by uh, the action of GLR of uh, double square bracket T. So uh, here GLR bit, GL beta plus is just a connected component in the thick in the thick of uh, okay. And then uh, you can, the first thing can prove that this category of C beta as defined above is, uh, um, is actually uh, corresponds to, so it's projective object, it actually corresponds to this restriction of Lucic's sheaf to this open part Y. So we can deduce from the initial equivalence between uh, between homotopy category of you can restrict the initial equivalence of homotopy category from projective quiver Heikler projective modules over quiver Heikler algebra with with uh, homotopy category of C x beta to restrict it to this open part gives you an equivalence uh, like this. So this is uh, this is the one thing, and then uh, actually what we used. So this would be a corresponds to the to the conjectural version where um, we have really this steep data without sharp, and the sharp ver version is actually corresponds to uh, killing some 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 uh, central some some equivalence. So uh, more precisely. Here, actually, we're not considering a complex on GL, uh, homotopy category of complex on GL, G, the thick grass manual equivalent with respect to this group action. We're only considering those which are constructible with respect to this action. Okay. And, and if you, you work in this uh, category of constructible, um, those which are constructed with this, uh, so in some sense you're kill, killing uh, the your like phase change to the you're kill, killing the equivalence with respect to this part, and this can be done algebraically on the on the uh, quiver Heiko side, and this is the definition of this C beta sharp. So it's some sort of quotient specializing some central elements in this in this algebra, and then you get this category. Okay, so this is the equivalence A. And then uh, the equivalence B is, is given by some sort of radon transform. So we want to go to from positive Grassmannian, so this thick upon Grassmannian, yeah, I should write the fine, thick upon Grassmannian to, uh, to this uh, so-called thin affine Grassmannian. So this is the usual affine Grassmannian of GLR uh, double bracket T quotient by GLR double square bracket T. Okay. So this is some quite some work to show that uh, using the random transform uh, functor, you can define the equivalence between these two homotopic categories where uh, the constructible sheaves we're considering are all like smooth with respect to the GLR bracket T action. And finally, using uh, Bayesian Kalinkov and Finkelberg's derived ZK equivalence, you can show that there is a derived equivalence between homotopy category of this thing with uh, the uh, derived category of perfect complexes on this uh, coherent sheaves on this neopotent cone. Okay. So these are the, are the, uh, are how the equivalents are, are constructed. And let me just make a comment about this conjecture that we can't prove at the moment. So, uh, so about this, this equivalence, 
So actually, uh, it's known that this C is of finite global dimension in this case. And so uh, that version would correspond to here, uh, I do the homotopy category of projective modules in C theta. And here I do uh, direct category shifts on GLR. And actually, uh, the, the equivalence of A and C uh, works, both of them are, are like works in the case without the sharp and, and in this like deformed version. But uh, where we had problem is to uh, show the, that uh, this radon transform also uh, defines an equivalence between these two uh, homotopy categories when you use equivalent uh, semi-simple complex instead of just constructible ones. So, so this is the, the obstruction for proving the conjecture at the moment. Is that equivalence B uh, conjectured in the equivariant case or known to be false? I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's... Uh, you mean, it, is it known that radon transforms is not an equivalence in that, in that case? Yeah, that's the question. Mm. No, I don't know, because here we're, so the thing is that if you just cons consider the derived category of uh, like uh, equivalent sheets on, on these two things, then it is some sort of equivalence. But here the problem is that when you have put equivalents in, you can't, uh, like this homotopy category of equivalent semi-simple complex, not the same as derived category. Um, of equivariant shapes on, on the variety. And that is the difficulty in the, in the, in the equivariant situation. Okay. Well, we hope they're still equivalent. That's basically uh, what our conjecture goes to, but uh, for the moment, I, I, I don't know. Okay, and then uh, and then to obtain the yeah, and then uh, to so we we get this triangulated equivalence, and then to get the the, the equivalence of, of the abelian category stated in a theorem, we just compare a standard. It, it is possible to to follow how the stan standard uh, of like proper standard object. Uh, no, rather standard object. Yeah, like you can you can compare structures on standard filtered objects under this equivalence, and then can deduce that this equivalence sends projective objects here to projective objects here in the inside the category of perverse coherent sheaves, and that is uh, how we deduce the the equivalence of abelian categories. Okay, and you can and and the final equivalence is quite. Uh, I mean. Um, it is quite explicit uh, combinatorially on the proper uh, standard modules. Okay, so um, in the last 10 minutes, I want to mention the relationship with monoidal categorification of quantum cluster algebras. So, um, so if we go back to the situation of um, a general quiver and the general symmetric Casmudi algebras, then there's a famous theorem by Geis, Leclerc, and, and Schrar, which says that if you take, uh, take an element in the wild group of G, and then you consider the quantum coordinate ring on this subspace <coughs> of, um, like for, the, for, for this unipotent group, which is just product of n alpha for alpha in, in the intersection of positive root and w of negative root. And uh, so, and there is a localization of, of this ring now, which is related to quantum unipotent cell. So the theorem says both these algebras have a structure of quantum cluster algebras. Okay. And I think it, there's, it makes no sense to, uh, for me to give a definition of quantum cluster algebras. I just want to stress that it is a additional structure 
on these algebras where you have clusters of variables which are produced under some mutation procedure. And this additional structure gives you also some distinguished elements in these algebras, which are called cluster monomials. So they're defined as uh, monomials of variables in a single, single cluster. Okay, anything. So anyway, so this is an uh, important structure on these two rings. And, and then uh, such structures was categorified by uh, Kong, Kashwahara, Kim, O, and Park in terms of quiver hiker algebras. So uh, what they do is somehow, so the, the starting point is like uh, what we discussed above. So if you fix a reduced expression of W, you can have a convex order on this set of positive roots. And then you, you take for each of them, the dual root vectors, a uh, canonical basis element, you have a simple module correspond to it. And you define a monoidal uh, stair subcategory generated by these simples and their shifts as above. So, and then you know that, uh, you know that at the level of Grodin group, this will corresponds to the quantum coordinate ring of this guy. And uh, these authors provide a monoidal categorification of the of the quantum cluster algebra structure on this on this ring. So moreover, the important additional uh, statement in this monoidal categorification is that um, the cluster monomials corresponds to classes of real simple objects in this in this uh, category. And so there's a localization of this category, which categorifies the, the second, uh, this quantum unipotent cell. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a categorification of quantum cluster algebras using quiver hyper algebras. And then recently in the case of affine SL2, there is another categorification by uh, Cautis, by uh, Cautis and Williams. And so what the setting they're considering is you take G is SL2 affine, and uh, you have two simple reflections in the well group, which is S0, S1, and you take this element W to be uh, S0, S1 to the power of N. And, in, and then this set of delta positive W will just be alpha zero plus K delta, for k, uh, which is positive and smaller or equal to 2n minus 1. Okay, so you notice that when n goes to infinity, this, this was just the, like the roots we considered in n of t before. Okay. And then uh, what Cartes and uh, Williams used was that was the following. So if you take k, um, yeah, like, I used T before. Um, if you take the, the usual affine Grassmannian, uh, this is, is the thin affine Grassmannian as we mentioned above, but here is the affine Grassmannian for the group GL capital N. And then, um, so this parameterized the uh, O lattices in KN and it carries an action of GLN of O and uh, semi-direct product with C star where C star acting by rotating the loops. And inside you can consider a sub uh, in scheme, which is uh, GL, maybe it's just a uh, scheme, sub scheme, GL, GRNR, which is the lattice inside, uh, inside the given standard lattice ON, such that the dimension of ON uh, mod L is R. So this dimension over C. Anyway, you can define a, a proper sub um, scheme if inside GLN, GRN, and then uh, and then the orbits on the affine Grassmannians have even dimensional, and it makes sense to define a perverse coherent sheaves 
equivalent perverse Korean sheaves on, on this uh, fine grass mammy. And it has the convolution product. And it can be shown that uh, if you take the whole category of perverse Korean sheaves on the fine grass manium, then uh, as a ring with this convolution product, it, it is the same as the quantum unipotent cell for this N upper W. Okay. And then uh, inside, if you only take those which are supported on this curl R and R for positive R, these are quant this the golden green corresponds to AQ of NW. And so the theorem of Cautis and Williams is that um, this category here provides a monoidal categorification of the cluster algebra on AQ of N upper W and and so you can, yeah, like these two categories by uh, the cluster algebra structure on the, this quantum coordinate ring and, and this, like on these two algebras, two cluster algebra. Okay, and then uh, of course the natural question would be how, to, how do you compare these two monoidal categorifications of the same cluster algebra? Mm, and and our theorem actually provides a way to compare them. Um, so, so here I need to use a result by Finkelberg and Fujita, where they say that there is a flat morphism from uh, the affine, like this part, this, uh, this curl Rn to uh, the neopotent cone of GLR. Okay, so this is just because uh, these are the lattices of co-dimension R inside ON, and the operator Z inside O will become a neopotent operator here. And then if you take the pullback of a shifted pullback of this map, it will induce a T exact functor between these two uh, equivalent derived category of coherent schemes. Okay, so here um, T that means for the perverse coherent sheet structure on both sides. So, uh, so our theorem went from this C sharp W, which is a subcategory in this CW that Kong Kashivara uh, and Kim O. Park used to categorify the, the this this uh, quantum cluster structure. So our equivalence was from this category to here, to um to to the perverse coherent sheaf on the neopotent cone, and then you use this functor to uh to go to the perverse coherent sheaves on the affine grass manion. and and then so in this way we get a graded monoidal faithful functor from uh, the categorification by Kong, Kashwara, Kim, O. Park, to the categorification by Cautis and Williams. And uh, we hope to prove this is, a, this is an equivalence, but for the moment, uh, we cannot prove this functor is full. So that's yeah. where we are. Okay, so I think that's all. Thank you. Uh, can you go back to the equality that Peter was asking about before? The, the, the tilting equivalence between the thick and the thin. Oh, oh yeah. Here? Yeah. So just to, um, so what exactly is going on there? So we, we have the thick grass manion and the thin grass manion, on the yeah. plus and the minus. Yes. And then um, which objects are getting matched up? So is it ICs on the left and what, which, which class of objects are getting? Well, we don't know which classes are matching to each other. So this is just an equivalent, like you, um, right, so, so, uh, so on this side, you, you take the homotopy category of uh, IC 
she's but in the like in the known in in the just constructible with respect to the geo audit. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, Oh, so both sides is just homotopy category of ICs. Yes. Constructible with respect to la. Okay. And then you're saying that, ah, I see the, so you're saying that like when we don't have equivariance, then we have some like magical tilting things or something that, that right. translate one into the other. But when we introduce equivariance, we don't have these guys anymore. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm, okay. I understand now. Um, so uh, there's a result of Bezra Kapnikov, which um, Jordi gave a long, long, long series of lectures on uh, relating to categorifications of the affine Hecke algebra. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I would like to be able to think of um, your story as um, analogous to that, or, or maybe even part of the same general thing. I mean, if you take uh, if you imagine at least the GLN case of the affine Hecke algebra story, that ought to um, uh, that ought to be something like a version of this for the quiver with one vertex and a loop. Um, uh, yeah, uh -huh. I, I think it's it's uh, it's closely related at least morally because uh, the basic chemical story was also like on one side you take constructible sheaves um, on the affine flag and or, and, and then on the other side, you take coherent sheaves on the Stanbrook varieties. And this, and, and what we are seeing here, I think it should be some sort of modules for that. Uh, well, it's not really modules, but uh, I don't know, it should be related, but I don't know how. <laughs> It's like here we're working for on coherent sheaves of neopotent cone. Well, in the Afan Heiko story, we had coherent sheaves on the Stenberg variety. And yeah, but you're absolutely right, Anthony. I think the, the thing is that basically coming up story is about like one categorification of Afan Heiko algebra as coxular. Um, high algebra associated with coxular system and the other is associated to like the Bernstein representation which is this loop presentation and, and here it's something similar but on the quantum group side yeah and I mean there has always appeared to be an, an analogy between the affine Heck algebra and the quantum loop algebra Yes. In, in all previous um, sort of geometric representation theory approaches to those things. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a bit different here that you don't have the whole quantum loop algebra. You've got um, uh, just part of it, UQ of NT. That's right, yes. Um, right, because all the geometric picture we use here are for the positive part and uh, like even for the usual G without loop, I, I don't think there's like there's not a, a nice geometric picture for it. There are some nice two categories for it, but uh, yeah, but like there's not a geometric model and it's kind of hard to think of what one should take on the coherent side for, for the loop algebra of the whole um, whole loop group, whole, yeah, loop algebra for the Lie algebra. If there's no further questions, um, let's thank Peng again. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>